So the third hydration reaction uh, we're going to learn here is called hydroboration oxidation. This is also an, another reaction that involves a sequence of steps. Again, that's absolutely imperative you include that one and that two. Uh, and the reagents here are BH3-THF. BH3 is called borane. Uh, and it turns out THF uh, is a, a cyclic ether, and it's got a lone pair of electrons on oxygen that can help stabilize the boron. So boron, you might remember, is a infamous for undergoing the, oct uh, the octet rule. So no filled octet would love for somebody to make another bond to them, and that's kind of what THF does. So it turns out borane is uh, definitely highly reactive, and THF kind of calms it down a little bit. Uh, but technically, you can just use pure BH3, but it turns out it dimerizes in kind of a funky way. Uh, but that dimer is B2H6, and so instead of actually writing it as BH3, it would most commonly be written as B2H6. So whether you see BH3.THF or B2H6, same reaction here uh, if, as far as step one goes. So if we kind of take a look at what's going on here, so boron, famous for under, going under the octet rule, so it's bonded to three hydrogens. I'm going to draw one off to the side here, short on room just a little bit there. So, and it turns out boron, again, having no filled octet, is actually the electrophile that's being attacked in step one. So, but it turns out simultaneously this boron hydrogen bond breaks and reattaches to the more substitute carbon all simultaneously. So it all happens together in that one step. So, and that just seems too easy. So oftentimes what we have students do here is we'll have them draw the transition state involved in this step. So, and if we look here, Every bond that's being broken or formed is a partial bond in a transition state. So we have pi bonds being broken. So in this case, then we're forming a bond to boron, which has still got two other hydrogens. So a bond between its third hydrogen is also being broken. And then we're forming a bond between that hydrogen and the carbon. So we get this lovely kind of four-membered ring looking structure for the transition state. So we'll put this double dacker, we put it all in uh, brackets here, that's our transition state for this reaction. So just real common for us to force that on you as well. And if we kind of look at the result here, now the less substitute sides bonded to the boron, the more substitute sides bonded to a hydrogen. So, but we're not done. It turns out step one typically repeats this process two more times. So in this case, boron started with three hydrons and borane. And by the time we're done with so far here, we've now only got two left. But what that means is that actually boron can react with as many as three alkenes. And so by the time it reacts with two more, it would now look like so. And we call this a trialkyl borane. So I've listed that as the intermediate for this reaction. So, but that's the end of step one. It just repeats that same uh, process two more times. So, and it turns out step two, in all likelihood, you probably don't need to know the mechanism for. I've seen one professor require this out of his students, but it's a, a multi-step reaction involving radicals. It's a little complicated for where we're at at this stage of the game. But the net result here is that we're going to break every single one of these carbon boron bonds and replace it with a bond to an OH instead. That's what the second oxidation step accomplishes. And so in this case, we're just going to create three equivalents of this lovely alcohol right here. Now in this example, the two carbons where we added the H and the OH, neither one turned into a chiral center, so the stereospecificity doesn't matter. But if it did, it turns out this is a syn addition, so when we form two chiral centers, we'll have to remember that the H and the OH add to the same face. And we can kind of see why that is. So the alkene, both of the sp2 hybridized carbons they're bonding to the boron and the hydrogen at the exact same time from the exact same molecule and that's why it has to come from the same face either both wedges or both dashes so we'll kind of find out that's the hallmark of a syn addition is you're bonding to two atoms from the same molecule at exactly the same time and just due to spatial restrictions they have to bond on the same face cool so this one is an anti-Markovnikov addition. The other two hydrations we did were Markovnikov. So the obvious difference here uh, is that which side gets the H and the OH is different. Uh, keep in mind also this does not go through a carbocation, and so we never have to worry about rearrangements either.